On today's video, we're talking The Flowers of Evil from Shuzo Oshimi. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Gio here, and finally I get to talk about The Flowers of Evil from Shuzo Oshimi. Super excited. I've had these books for a while, and I've been wanting to make a video about it. And this is mostly a spoiler-free review. I will be making a separate video later on, a little bit more spoilerific, talking about all of Oshimi's work. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, The Flowers of Evil... A very complex, interesting uh, story, this coming-of-age psychological suspense tale. We follow the character of Kazuga, this uh, middle schooler who's a bit of a bookworm. He's fascinated by a book that he has, a collection of poems called The Flowers of Evil. Uh, it's from a French author that I'm not going to begin to pronounce because I'm probably going to butcher that. Uh, so the character of Kazuga... He is an interesting oddball. He doesn't quite fit in. He is shy and introverted and sort of feels suffocated by the world around him. But at the same time, he's kind of he kind of has an ego to him in his own way. He sees himself above everybody, especially with the books that he's reading, uh, with The Flowers of Evil, for example. He views himself a little bit more uh, superior because of his reading. And I could somehow relate to that with the fact that growing up, we don't really know what the hell we were doing. So in that area, I, I chuckled and I found myself relating somewhat to this character. Now, Kazuga is a little bit different in that he is obsessed and sort of uh, idolizing this character called Saeki, this young, pretty girl in his class, uh, top of the class, super smart, pretty, all that stuff. She's uh, relatively popular and he has a deep fascination with her calling uh, or thinking to himself that she is his muse. He doesn't really have the nerve to let her know and gets quite anxious when the topic comes up with the other kids teasing him like, oh, you have a crush on Saeki. And he's like, nah, I don't. Um, I'm, I'm beneath her. I'm not worthy and stuff like that. So uh, Kazuga makes the really foolish decision on a particular afternoon after school. He impulsively finds this uh, gym bag in his class and it belongs to Saeki and it still has her clothing inside. So he foolishly takes it and uh, he gets caught by another character who is super important and central to the themes of uh, The Flowers of Evil, and that is the character of Nakamura. She essentially blackmails uh, Kazuga into forming a contract and uh, starts uh, toying with him with the idea that she's going to reveal his secret. He is just shocked and can't believe that it's happening. He took one wrong decision and it just blew up in his face. So he follows along with her uh, plans and, and uh, her toying with him and all that stuff. Uh, nobody knows. Everybody starts making a fuss like there's this pervert on the loose. We got to watch out. We got to protect the kids and all that stuff. And they don't know that it's one of them, one of their own that did that. And uh, Kazuga is super conflicted. He knows that what he did is wrong, but he can't bring himself to confess and return the gym bag and all that stuff. Meanwhile, you have the character of Nakamura who's exploiting this moment and finally sees somebody uh, in her own light. This is a character that uh, is kind of a potty mouth calling everybody shit bugs and stuff like that. She views the world hazily and different from everything else, from everybody else, I should say, and uh, sort of wants to go to the other side. That's a theme that gets explored later on in the story. She wants to, I guess she's uh, not thrilled with the way things are and wants to experience more out of life to uh, sort of disrupt society and um, form her own path. Well, while you have the character of Kazuga, who is going through somewhat similar feelings and emotions, but he doesn't quite know it yet. And by being berated by the character of uh, Nakamura, he sort of starts um, 
forming a relationship with her. And it's not necessarily romance or love, but more of a love of what she represents, of what she is, what she's doing for him and making him realize that he sort of wants more out of life. These are characters that aren't satisfied with the day-to-day -day activities. Now, one of the topics that Shuzo Oshimi wrote about in The Flowers of Evil is perversion. That is one of the main themes in the manga. And we see that in not in a sexual kind of way. We see that more in Nakamura and Kazuga wanting to experience more out of life and disrupt the flow of society, if you will, not to conform to it, but to sort of make them and chart their own path in troubled waters. And throughout the course of the story, Nakamura makes Kazuga do crazy things that are quite perverse and they do involve some sexual stuff in nature like at, at some point they plan on stealing uh, some female underwear and vandalizing some things in school and in town and the rest of the cast is shocked they don't know who's making all of these crazy things but they're they want to get down to the bottom of things now the character of Saeki she eventually does form a relationship with Kazuga and this mortifies him. He is super conflicted because he doesn't want to reveal what he's done, but he he wants to, but it's difficult and he doesn't want to possibly ruin everything, his relationship with Saeki and with the town and family and, and what will people think and stuff like that. So uh, at some point during the tale, of this uh, manga, uh, Nakamura forms this uh, threesome of sorts, and no, it's not what you're thinking, I probably shouldn't have said that, but let's go with that. This uh, trio of sorts, and Saeki uh, thinks that uh, Kazuga could be two-timing her with uh, Nakamura, but that could, that is further from the case. You have more of uh, Kazuga just wanting to escape this anxious, crazy, uh, problem that he's put himself in by having to depend on Nakamura, not revealing what he did and all that stuff. And it, it plays to that cat and mouse game. But at the same time, you see the progress of, of Kazuga as he realizes what he wants out of life uh, or starting to realize. And you have the character of Nakamura who finally sees an individual that can stand next to her and understands her plight and her troubles and can see that uh, or they want to see things in a different light and at some point in the story they mention going to the other side not uh, not just literally leaving the town but metaphorically and, and stuff like that so the book has some very heavy psychological themes running throughout and at some point during the story, during the middle portion, something big happens where there is a time skip. And so you follow the characters uh, years later, we follow Kazuga's journey and the character progression is fantastic. An introverted, shy kid gets involved into the most unlikely scenario possible, forcing him uh, to come out of his shell. And that's the point of the story, right? This extraordinary event shapes and molds somebody into becoming an adult and how we don't really have control and a say over what happens in life. However, we can uh, react to it and adjust accordingly and grow from the experiences of uh, middle school and high school and becoming an adult and going to college and stuff like that. Now the character of Saeki, she is in a bit of a pickle because she does form this relationship with Kazuga and I'm not uh, spoiling much just by mentioning that that relationship kind of blossoms but she's naive as well. She doesn't really know uh, that there's more to life than her first love, if you will. And um, this obsession that forms into wanting uh, to not let go of that love. Uh, do you conform and uh, go with what the other person's doing at the cost of your own freedom and your own 
uh, well-being and mental health and all that stuff. And you also have the character of Nakamura, who is sort of the wild card in all of this. This um, character that isn't sticking to what society says and wants to create her own path and take uh, the character of Kasuga with her on this journey. Now, uh, I haven't talked about the art in The Flowers of Evil, but it is quite excellent. I am a huge fan of Oshimi's art. He is a wonderful, talented mangaka. And yeah, this series just knocks it out of the park. It's grounded and realistic. The town portrayal is based off Oshimi's own childhood town in that it's all rusted out. It's a very empty town where everybody knows each other. It's small. The streets are empty. There's a sense of stagnation. And you have characters like uh, Kazuga and Nakamura that want to break that mold and want to find more. And that's something that I think a lot of people can relate growing up and you're wondering to yourself, is there more to life than just repeating the same actions again and again, day in and day out? What else is there? What is there to life? And I think that's one of the main themes aside from the whole aspect of um, rebelliousness and teen angst and perversion and stuff like that. Wonderful characters, fantastic uh, art, a really solid story with a great beginning, middle and end. I think it does stick the landing, like I said. And yeah, I highly recommend it. If you haven't checked it out, please do. I think you'll uh, enjoy it quite a bit. So what about you guys? Have you read The Flowers of Evil? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't read it, let me know what are some of your favorite coming of age stories or your favorite Oshimi story aside from Flowers of Evil. Thank you everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of A Week in Geekdom. It truly does mean a whole lot. Thank you so much. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.